lecture, we are going to discuss in detail the optics of a compound microscope. Now, a compound microscope unlike a simple microscope has two uh, lens systems. Now, if you compare a simple lens, it is made of a single lens which can be hold or which can be an object holder and could be mounted on a support. For example, if I show you in this on this screen, then you can have a simple uh, holder which can be holding this lens and this lens could be moved up and down here to uh, which can be moved up and down uh, to adjust the uh, focus and magnification can be done on this lens. Now, as we see that compound microscope is little different from here as I will show you here. Now, in compound microscope rather than one there are usually two magnifying systems one uh, in tandem, one defined by objective and other defined by the eyepiece. Now, this avoids practical problem of making lens of a very short focal length. If you see in this figure, the uh, object is placed just after the focal length or more than the one focal length uh, of the lens. The objective forms the image which is real inverted image. If you could recall, we have discussed this in the last lecture. Now, this real inverted image will act as an object for the eyepiece and the eyepiece will form uh, uh, another image which will act as an object for the eyes and finally, the image enlarged image will be formed on the retina of the eyes which will be seen uh, as a, a virtual image or which will be seen as inverted image as we will discuss it in later. Now, a compound microscope if you see this is a very simple diagram of a compound microscope and we will discuss all different parts of compound microscope here. Uh, the compound microscopes can be of different kinds, they could be uh, simple uh, with different optics like fluorescence optics, it could be a phase contrast microscope, it could be a stereo microscope or it could even be an inverted microscope and like so on. Now, here if you see uh, as we go along with different components of the microscope, first thing is the uh, light source which is uniform bright light source is placed either externally like shown here or it could be mounted in the base of the microscope uh, right below here. Now, the, there is another lens system condenser lens system which collects the light from the light source and this is uh, the condenser li uh, light passing from the condenser will be illuminating the object in a very small cone of light which is uh, focused uh, on a very small area and all stray light or extra light is being avoided by the apertures and iris which are placed at different places. The object which is illuminated here the which is at the specimen stage will uh, uh, the light or the light from condenser will be illuminating the object and the light from object or specimen will pass on to the objective lens. Now, there will be two kinds of lights here one which is not altered by the specimen and another will be altered by the specimen. Now, one which is not altered that is not diffracted will be forming the uh, will be forming which is not altered will be forming the background and one which is diffracted will be focused by the objective to form the final image at the intermediate image plane. Now, after objective there is a tube here which connects the objective to the eyepiece. The objective forms an image which will be real and inverted image because the specimen is placed just one focal length away little uh, farther from one focal length from the uh, uh, specimen. So, a real inverted image is formed in here. The inverted image formed acts as an object and the eyepiece which is connected here at the other end of the mechanical tube will be uh, forming uh, will be uh, making image at uh, virtual image uh, which is like here 
uh, if you have uh, recall that when you put your object uh, below one focal length, then a virtual image is formed, which is formed at the base of the microscope and or in the mechanical tube. And this will be acting, uh, this will be acting as an object for the eyes and eyes uh, will be the, the uh, eye lens will form the final image on the retina and which will be viewed uh, on the retina as an enlarged or magnified image, because it occupies larger area on the eyes. Now, let us discuss some of the parts here uh, to understand uh, the microscope. Now, here condenser lens, which is uh, we will be discussing it in detail also. Condenser lenses fo forms a very fine focused light onto the, uh, onto the specimen, which is to avoid any stray or, or light, which could uh, form a diffused image. Now, always there is a diffusing screen port before the light source, after the light source and before the condenser, so that the image of light source is not formed here. If you see here objectives here, two objectives, there are uh, these objective lenses, which are all corrected, I could, uh, uh, if you can recall, all the lenses including condenser, objective and eyepiece are corrected for various aberrations. Now, here if you uh, see these two lenses, which are objective lenses, here more than two le lenses could be put in, which could go up to five. Now, these objective lenses are attached to a rotating nose piece, which is threaded in here. Uh, and this uh, is connected to a tube length, which is finite tube length and on the other end of the tube length is the eyepiece. Now, here uh, these objectives could be, this nose piece could be rotated and the objective of different magnification, it could be 10 x, it could be uh, 20 x, it could be 40 x or 60 x magnification objectives could be uh, uh, used for magnification. Uh, as per the application and most of the time, most of the advanced microscopes has uh, will, will be par focal or you, in other words, uh, the specimen will not lose focus when you are changing the objective by rotating the nose piece. So, that is a very important thing in here. Now, mechanical tube length is uh, a fixed tube length uh, and uh, the problem, there are two kinds of optical systems here. One is finite optical system, as I will show you in the next slide. Another is infinity corrected optic systems. It is very difficult to uh, put in auxiliary components in finite optical system or fixed tube length, because of problems of uh, correct image formation or sharp image formation due to aberrations and other problems. But infinity corrected optics, there will be a uh, option to put in the uh, auxiliary components like prism or polarizer or other things, so that you can be uh, uh, and without any uh, problems in the image here. Now, uh, here if you see the objective, the mechanical tube length will be defined from the nose piece where it is threaded till where eye pieces attached. Now, here if you see, if you consider eye pieces, there could be uh, different arrangements here. It could be monocular, it could be binocular or it could be trinocular port. Monocular means a single pair of, uh, a single pair of eyepieces attached in here. Binocular means two eyepieces are attached and trinocular means the three eyepieces are attached in here. Now, eyepieces could be arranged in different fashion. Now, here it could be monocular or binocular eyepiece or a trinocular eyepiece or we also call it as a trinocular port. Now, most of the microscopes will have a inclined viewing for easy viewing, direct viewing here through eyes. Uh, if you have upright, uh, upright eyepieces, then it is very hard to view like you have to stand and you cannot be easily viewing that. So, for inclined viewing like I will show you on this screen the eyepieces or the mechanical tube lens are inclined at an angle, so that you can easily uh, see the, uh, you can easily observe the uh, image in the compound microscope. So, if I can say, if it is a binocular or a trinocular port, then you will have a tilted eyepieces or in some cases the mechanical tube also might be tilted. So, you have a tilted uh, uh, binocular eyepieces and you will have another port, 
which will be for a trinocular port. So, what you have is rather than having one and you can see here very easily uh, in this. Now, binocular uh, eyepieces the light will be from objective the rays which are wave, wave trains which are coming from the objective will be splitted by uh, uh, splitted and then enters the two eyepieces. The trinocular port where you have three uh, eyepieces they could be used for different purpose. For example, the two persons would like to view the object and uh, would like to view the image uh, simultaneously then like for example, a student and teacher like a teacher is either examining the student or teacher is explaining a particular sample a particular specimen to the student then a trinocular port could be utilized. Another thing is that you can attach here a camera or a screen to permanently record the images and that is why you can use a trinocular port upright here straight and your other part is inclined for better viewing or for a convenient viewing in here. So, that is a very important part here uh, though we have made this figure uh, uh, in that way, but what you have is uh, you have mostly inclined view in this. Uh, now, we will discuss like there is a coarse focus, there is fine focus and this will be uh, this is like uh, you can adjust the microscope accordingly for uh, focusing on to the specimen. Now, let us move on to the uh, as we were talking about the two optical systems in the fixed tube lens. Remember fixed tube lens is almost around 160 millimeter as accepted widely accepted. Now, here in this figure if you see I have shown you the finite optical system. Now, finite optical system consists of a uh, objective lens, eyepiece lens and then finally, you are viewing it directly through your eyes. What happens in finite uh, system or finite optical system which is also we call fixed tube length, the object is placed little farther from the focal length. Like you can see here there is a uh, object in the form of arrow has been placed. Now, this uh, light it is illuminated object the light falls on the objective lens and it is focused at the intermediate image plane. Now, this intermediate image plane uh, will be placed in such a way that it is in, in uh, this is little less than the focal length of the eyepiece. Now, if you see here the optical tube length which we were talking about the mechanical tube length or optical tube length is from where the objective is threaded and with it is like focal length of the objective on the other side and till the intermediate image plane this distance is called optical tube length. Now, this acts as an um, object for the eyepiece and eyepiece will make a virtual erect image on the same side of the lens that is eyepiece. Now, this image is formed at a 25 centimeter or 250 millimeter from the eye lens which is uh, you can say a relaxed position for the eyes to view the objects. Now, this virtual image acts as the object for the eye lens and finally, an inverted real image is formed on the uh, retina of the eye. Now, which is uh, of course, not perceived as the uh, inverted image rather it is perceived as the erect image as, as it is here uh, by the brain. Uh, as we know that when we see the objects directly through our eyes though uh, inverted image is formed on the retina, but we see people as upright or erect. So, in finite optical system it is very difficult to introduce auxiliary components between the objective and the eyepiece because there will be problems of spherical or other aberrations and the image formation will not be sharp. So, those to avoid those things uh, and many times you might have to increase the tube length also uh, mechanical tube length which might not be possible. So, what what uh, advanced microscope now most of them contains this is an infinity corrected optics. Now, in infinity corrected optics what happens is that you are able to insert auxiliary components like lot of polarizers, prisms. Uh, are in, in included in here and without any image problem. 
Now, how does it work? It is a simple schematic here shows that what you have is, so you have other lenses like condenser lens system, you have object plane um, and but what you have is bit objective lens which, uh, uh, which is placed in here, there is an additional lens near to the objective lens and it is called tube lens. Now, what have uh, here the light coming from the specimen that is diffracted light or direct light coming from the specimen is directed at infinity by the objective. It is not focused actually, rather it is directed by the objective at infinity. And finally, so here objective is not really focusing the light, rather the tube lens is focusing. So, when it is directed to infinity, it falls onto the tube lens and finally, tube lens focuses the light onto the intermediate image plane. And uh, so, in essentially when you have to determine the magnification of the objective here, you have to take two things. One is reference focal length which is from tube lens till the intermediate image plane and then you have to also consider the focal length of the objective that is real focal length where you are focusing the object. So, magnification of the objective will be given by reference focal length divided by focal length of the objective. So, that is how you will be determining here. And finally, then as we have seen, let us see this in the ray diagram as we um, it will be much simpler. Here you can see like we have shown you in the finite corrected optics, here objective lens is there, there is a tube lens and there is the space between the objective and the tube lens is called infinity focal space or infinity space. Now, this space is utilized for insertion of different auxiliary components which you can insert in prism or polarizer or analyzer whatever you would like to for your particular application. And that has made a lot of advancement and lot of variation in different types of microscope. And you can see that rays here which are coming uh, diffracted or direct rays which are coming from the object are uh, focused at infinity that is parallel rays almost are coming out in here. And these parallel rays are then or infinity focused rays are then. Uh, uh, focused finally, focused to intermediate image plane by tube lens and like in other system virtual image is formed here which is erect and which is at around 25 milli 250 millimeter or 25 centimeter as to say and then finally, eye lens will form a magnified image which is inverted on the retina, but upright on the uh, perceived upright by us or by the viewer actually. So, you can see that there is a completely different and this like here there is no uh, image formation. Most of aberrations could be corrected in objective lens or they could be corrected in tube lens. Most of the time objective lens is corrected for aberrations and it could be uh, uh, or it could be a tube lens. So, infinity corrected now here one has to understand it is not like there is an infinity space or something it is infinity corrected only means that rays are uh, focused at infinity and finally, uh, they are brought to intermediate image plane by tube lens. So, uh, modern microscopes most of them contains infinity corrected optics as we say. Now, supposing there is no direct viewing like you are not observing directly the image, but you would like to record the image for uh, permanent uh, storage or viewing it later or analyzing it later, then little dif uh, differences has to be put in here. Uh, you can see here the main difference is that earlier what we were doing is intermediate image plane was within the focal length of the eyepiece. That is your uh, image formation that is at intermediate image plane was smaller than the one focal length of the eyepiece, but now here it is little farther than uh, foc uh, eyepiece focal length. So, that now a virtual image will not be formed on the same side of the eyepiece lens, rather there will be a real inverted image magnified image will be formed on the other side of the eyepiece lens, which could be collected on a screen or recorded on a video camera for further applications. So, projections can also be done like in case of uh, when you have a trinocular port and you are putting in camera in there, you would like to record the image rather than viewing there uh, directly. So, this was little bit about different uh, 
types like we have seen infinity corrected or finite uh, uh, optic systems and different parts. Let us discuss these different microscope components in detail. And three main components which we are going to discuss in here, the most important is objective lens. Like I told you, a simple lens is made up of a single lens which is called objective lens and it is called objective because it is closer to the object. Then second is ocular lens or eyepiece lens which is closer to eyes where you are viewing the object. That condenser lens is the part of illumination system and it focuses a fine beam of light onto the specimen in a very small cone and we will see what kinds of illumination systems are available. If you could recall in history of we have told you there is a kohler illumination. Uh, so, there is kohler illumination and there is a critical illumination we will discuss that. Then there could be optical filters, there could be diaphragms or as we say apertures, there could be photo adapters which are there. Uh, which, uh, which are utilized for filming or uh, the in camera. Now, here we are going to discuss three of them that is objective, ocular and condenser lens. Now, most of the objectives in the modern microscopes are standardized with respect to numerical aperture and magnification. Now, remember uh, empty magnification is never uh, allowed here that is magnification is ne never empty because you increase the numerical aperture as the magnification needs to be increased. Numerical aperture can be increased by decreasing focal length. If you could recall we have discussed this where numerical aperture is the light gathering capacity and it could be increased by decreasing wavelength. Uh, you can increase it by uh, not decreasing wavelength that is a separate thing but you can increase it by decreasing the focal length. You can bring the lens closer to the specimen, so that more light could be collected at higher angle. Now, also lens diameter decreases with increasing magnification. So, uh, this also could be done. Then there are uh, like we have discussed earlier, it could be oil immersion lenses or lens working in the air or it could be water or glycerin all of them has different refractive indices and accordingly they will give you the resolution. So, high magnification in oil immersion is achieved by placing object almost within the lens very close to the lens since it has a very high numerical aperture. Uh, because of this in the oil immersion lenses there are residual chromatic aberrations and those could be corrected by compensating eyepieces called apochromatic lenses. Uh, also, objective lenses are corrected for spherical and other aberrations. There are flat field objectives which are or plain uh, objectives which are uh, corrected for different uh, aberrations like flat field objectives are corrected for curvature of field. It is required for the microscope when you are doing photo micrography and you are covering the larger area. This figure shows a typical uh, objective lens as we can see here that objective lens the size of the objective lens is bigger than a single lens because this consists of a series of glass lenses and which are uh, there to correct all spherical and other aberrations. Now, there are few things uh, written in here which we should take a note of and every objective will be inscribed by that. One is plane and apo which is for corrected spherical and chromatic aberration. Then magnification 60 x here means that the image could be magnified 60 times that is what uh, uh, magnification shows here. It could be 40 x, it could be 5 x, it could be 10 x. The numerical aperture if you see that is the 0.95. Now, remember as magnification increases numerical aperture also has to increase to avoid the uh, empty magnification. So, it could be uh, right from very small to very high. Now, 0 0.95 is almost highest in the case of lenses which are being used in the air. This here tube length if you see the infinity sign shows that it is infinity corrected optics. This microscope contains or this objective is infinity corrected. Uh, another is this is cover glass thickness is given many objectives will, ha will have a color code for different kinds of magnification and there is a front lens which is very close to the specimen and the working distance will be cal calculated from the front lens 
to the specimen where it is placed on a specimen stage. So, objective lenses, now if you compare certain properties of objective lens like we are talking about when you increase the numerical aperture, then the it, you have to reduce the focal length. So, there are few things which we need to relate here. Uh, for example, when you increase the magnification as shown in this ta table from 10 to 95 x, you can clearly see that numerical aperture also increases likewise. And, but focal length decreases that is you are bringing the objective lens uh, closer to the specimen. So, you are decreasing the focal length. Also, the working distance decreases. The working distance as I said is the distance between the front lens to the specimen and this will decrease as you increase the magnification and as you increase the numerical aperture. Diameter of field that is the area which you can view will also decrease because farther you are from the specimen more area could be seen. As you go closer to the specimen less area you can see. We will just uh, discuss what is uh, diameter of field as such later on. So, this is uh, uh, about the objective lens which are like I said very much standardized uh, for magnification and resolution. Let us now move on to the next important part of the microscope, compound microscope eyepieces or ocular lenses. Now, ocular lenses are also called projecting lens or projector lenses, because what happens is they are projecting the image which is formed already by the objective lens. Remember objective is the main lens in the microscope and the resolving power of microscope is solely determined by the objective, because objective collects the rays, diffracted rays or most of the information directly from the specimen and the eye pieces will collect the information from the image formed by the uh, objective. So, there cannot be any additional information which eye piece could collect. Only thing it can do is it could magnify the image to a certain label, so that more information can be viewed or observed. It is always better to have a higher magnification objective than a eye piece. For example, 40 x objective with a 5 x eye piece will give you much greater resolution than a 10 x objective and 20 x eye piece. So, one has to remember that. There are different types of eye pieces, there are many different kinds of eye pieces and we are not going to go in all of them, but some of the names here I have given which are used frequently like Ramston, Hygens, Kellner and compensating eye pieces. Compensating we have discussed like in oil immersion lenses for correcting the, the chromatic aberrations, residual chromatic aberrations, the compensating eye pieces are utilized. Now, Ramston and Hygens eye pieces which are widely used and but there are many variations have come up. These two consist of two lenses at opposite end of a tube, that tube which is connected to the one end of the mechanical tube lens tube. Uh, so, what you have is two lenses, one is closer to the eye which is called eye lens and another is or at the other end which is called field lens. So, these two pairs of lenses are available with a diaphragm either in between the two lenses or at one end of the lens as we will see in the figure. Now, if you can consider Kellner lens, it is a modified version and uh, of Ramston with a doublet of eye lens and it features a uh, higher uh, field of view for eyes or you can say higher eye point and a larger field of view. Now, these are uh, these are schematic of the two kinds of lenses which we were talking about. This is hygienian lens. Now, you can see hygienian lens these there is eye lens here, there is a field lens at other end of the tube and in between there is a circular aperture opening which will determine the field of view it is called diaphragm. Now, if you could see that the uh, convex part these are plano convex lenses and the convex part of the lens focuses on to the specimen side. These are also called this is also called negative eye piece. Now, in comparison Ramston eye pieces are uh, also plano convex lens, but if you could see that the, the convex part of the field lens faces the eye lens rather than towards the specimen. Also the diaphragm is not situated between the two lenses, rather diaphragm is situated below the field lens 
and uh, this uh, you can say uh, you can mount uh, adaptable for mounting reticles. Uh, Ramston lenses are adapted for mounting reticles and their uh, uh, focal length is kind of at the diaphragm here. So, these are called positive lenses and they are used in many different applications. Hygienian lenses uh, uh, eyepieces are also used for in many teaching and research labs. There could be many other eyepieces which we are not going into. The third component is the condenser lens. Now, condenser lens are very important part of illumination system. Now, there are few conditions which needs to be fulfilled uh, for uh, uh, like uh, object uh, to be illuminated in an ordinary microscope. What are those conditions? One is that incident light must fill the numerical aperture to ensure the resolution of objective that is the best resolution of the objective. So, first thing is that the numerical aperture should be completely filled to get complete resolution of objective. Second is the illumination should be uniform across the specimen. That is, it should not be like the one part is illuminated more than another. So, it should be uniform illumination across the specimen has to be there to con and uh, one has to eliminate all stray light or noise. Now, condenser lens plays an important role to fulfill these criteria. So, what has to be done? One is that a small dimension source of light is focused down to a very small area by using multiple lens in a single lens unit called condenser. Now, there could be different types of condenser, four types of condenser lenses. One is ab lens, aplanetic, achromatic and aplanetic achromatic lens. Now, ab lens is not corrected for any aberration. They were very simple lens used earlier. A planetic lenses are those which are corrected for spherical aberrations and achromatic lenses are corrected for chromatic aberrations. A planetic achromatic lenses are corrected for both aberrations. So, here uh, these are four types and as you uh, have more features they are more expensive also. Now, condenser can provide two kinds of illumination. One is called critical illumination another is called kohler illumination. Now, object is illuminated in uh, let us discuss critical illumination. Object will be illuminated by a cone of light from a focused light source. Now, the position of the condenser with respect to the object is adjusted. So, that to ensure that a spot of illuminating object, object is as small as possible. It is a cone uh, you can say small cone of light is illuminating the object. Also, it should be as bright as possible, it should be as intense as possible. Uh, and most of the time a diffused screen is put before the light source like I told you, so that the light source is not filmed here, uh, not imaged here. Uh, now, numerical aperture needs to be at least as great as the objective in order to fill the object ap aperture, that is a very important part. If you cannot fill the objective aperture, you cannot get the uh, required resolution of the or the full resolution of the objective lens. So, numerical aperture of condenser needs to be uh, greater than the numerical aperture of objective. Now, this is a very simple schematic diagram shown here to show the critical illumination. It is a simple light source illuminating uh, will be illuminating the object and condenser will focus the light in a very small cone of area. Stray light has to be avoided through different apertures or diaphragms which are uh, placed at different places, uh, different uh, uh, sites and a very small cone of light will illuminate the object at the object plane and finally, the objective and the diffracted and undiffracted non diffracted light will enter the objective. So, critical illumination is a simple illumination, uh, but now it has been replaced by cooler illumination which is much more intense and precisely controlled as compared to the uh, critical illumination. Now, in this one there is an extra or accessory lens called field lens is placed between the light source and condenser uh, and when light rays leaves the condenser, it leaves as a parallel beam of light, many parallel beams of light called pencils of light. So, you can say there are many small cone of light which are uh, 
falling uh, on the specimen at different angles actually. So, all light passes through the object at various angles and the angle will increase with the distance of the source point from the optical axis. So, uh, axis is here illuminated by sets of pencils that makes up the for the cone of light which was in critical illumination. Now, condenser uh, can be adjusted and uh, it is made sure that uh, stray light is uh, avoided. Uh, if you see in this, this figure shows you a very simple schematic of how the, uh, the color illumination is achieved. You can see there is a field lens here and this field lens and there are field irises or substage iris at different places which will not allow the stray light to pass on. And finally, the object is illuminated rather than a one cone of light, many pencils of light are illuminating the object uniformly and, and this is much more precisely controlled and the, uh, you can get intense uniform beam to illuminate the object and which is used in most of the microscopes. So, this was about critical and colour illumination uh, by the condenser and we have discussed the three kinds of uh, lens uh, systems which are important in here uh, objective, eyepiece and condenser. Now, there are few terms which needs to be discussed in here before we uh, uh, like move on to the particular microscopic techniques. One which if you remember with objective we were trying to discuss like field of view other things. Before that there are two terms depth of field and depth of focus. Now, depth of field is a thickness of a specimen that can acceptably be sharp at a given focus level. So, that depth of field uh, if it is a uh, particular thickness of a specimen can be at uh, focus then it is depth of field. So, once you go more than that then focus is lost. Another is term is depth of focus. Depth of focus refers to the range over which the image plane can be moved uh, while an accept acceptable amount of sharpness is maintained. So, that is depth of focus. Uh, field of view which we were discussing earlier. Now, field of view is another important thing that how much area of the specimen you are viewing. So, diameter of the field in an optical microscope is expressed by field of view number or simply field number. Now, this is the diameter of the view of field in millimeter measured in the intermediate image plane in most cases. Now, the eyepiece field diaphragm opening diameter determines the view field size. If you could remember in Ramston and Hygienian, we have shown that there is a diaphragm that is circular aperture and that will determine the field of view. Uh, field size in a specimen plane is then defined as the field number divided by magnification of objective. So, when we were say field view that was an intermediate image plane, the field size it at the object or specimen level. The field size is given by field number and divided by the magnification actually that is objective ma magnification. So, you can determine the field size in the specimen plane by this simple formula. Another important part like we have discussed uh, like resolution, magnification, but another important part of viewing an object or a specimen is the visibility. Now, unless different components or different parts of the specimen are visible that is they could be differentiated like uh, different points in the object could be differentiated from each other and could be differentiated from the background you will not be able to see lot of uh, biological specimens are transparent and many times though they uh, could be uh, observed, but they are very hard to be visible in the image because the intensity differences between them between the two objects in the specimen or between the object and the background is too low. So, they could not be seen. Now, here comes the term contrast. So, there has to be contrast for visibility. What is contrast? Contrast can be defined as the difference in light intensity between the object image, object or image and the background. Now, here the difference in color and brightness of an object from other objects in vicinity and background creates contrast. 
and allows the details of an object to be visible. For human eye, minimum contrast value is of 2 percent that is 0 0.02, which is required to distinguish the differences between an object and its background. And it could be given by simple formula that is percent contrast could be calculated by I s that is the background I s is the specimen intensity minus I b which is background intensity into 100 divided by I b which is the background intensity. Like I said most biological specimens are transparent and are not visible because of the lack contrast and there has to be created contrast by different techniques. One is staining the objects with particular dyes which them a particular the, and those dyes can uh, absorb light and can give intensity differences. But there are other methods also which are uh, uh, also utilized for uh, creating contrast. Uh, like we are going to discuss in the coming classes in the, uh, or in the coming lectures how the contrast could be created without staining the objects. Now, when you stain the object or specimen, then what you do is you to certain extent you cannot uh, observe live cells or the cells as it is. There will be some uh, differences in observing live cells and the stained cells. Uh, other than staining, there could be uh, different optical phenomena could be used to create contrast. For example, we will be discussing dark field microscopy phase contrast microscopy, fluorescence microscopy, polarization microscopy uh, for uh, an interference microscopy to see how contrast is developed in these different techniques. And then uh, also we will be discussing how specimen is stained, how these uh, samples are prepared for, uh, uh, for the uh, observation under a microscope. So, uh, in the next lecture we will be discussing specific techniques and we will start with uh, dark field and phase contrast microscopy. Thank you very much. <laughs>